Hey, what's going on guys? It's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. And today we're in Wixom, Michigan at Lingenfelter Performance Engineering. I'm joined by Mark Rapson. He's COO and VP of Operations. And between us here is a 454 cubic inch LS7 and it's our Engine of the Week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrade One, L Ring DOS Original, and NPW. Mark, good to see you. Good to see you Thanks for having us in the shop Absolutely. here. Uh, you know, we just got done uh, doing some dyno runs on this uh, 454 LS7. Yeah. So, it's uh, nice and warm in the dyno cell, and I'm sure some of the viewers at home will, will hear some of the ancillary noises in the, in the dyno cell here. But uh, we wanted to know a little bit more about this engine. I understand it's a brand new build and, and just kind of went through its paces. Yep, so this is a brand new, this is one of our Eliminator spec motors. So it was built custom uh, for a customer of ours, Mike Revere. Uh, it is a 454 cubic inch. We're using an LSR concept block. Yeah. Uh, there are LSX uh, GM cylinder heads on it, We're running a four and a quarter inch stroke crank and a 4185 bore to achieve the, the, uh, the 454 cubic inches. So these are high compression engines. This is 13.9 to one compression in here. We run diamond pistons in this particular application. Uh, we use line to line coatings on them. This will be an E85 engine when it's in the car. We break it in on 109 fuel. Uh, E85 during a break-in period can tend to wash the cylinder wall, so we like to use race gas during the break-in period, and then we'll we'll uh, flop it over to the E85 for some of the final runs. But this motor is spec to run a little over 800 horsepower in its NA format with this particular manifold and configuration. Yeah. Um, and again, this is a road race motor, not a drag race motor, so this is a high endurance type application. So the best of the best is in this motor to make it right. live. Um, and our expectations when we do these motors is these motors will run for about three years before we take them apart. Really? So wow. we'll do some valve train checks on them from year to year, but the bottom end of this motor, once we're done breaking it in and get it all certified and in the car, our expectation for this, whether it's a road race or a drift motor, is they'll run approximately three years before we tear them down. Wow. So you're exciting. getting to see a brand new motor yeah. just going through its break-in stages. I mean, this motor will be in here for the better part of the day. Uh, simply because we're going through and checking everything, whether it's water temperature and oil pressure, you know, all of the calibration cycles, we'll do a leak down and we'll check it again. So we, when, by the time this motor goes in a car, it'll have been completely vetted and checked out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Mark, you mentioned the concept performance LSR block, as well as the diamond pistons that you have in here for the high compression. How about some of the other, you know, rotating assembly components and, and the top end? So this is a Cali's crank eight counterweight crank in it and we run cali's ultra connecting rods in it as well okay. h-beam connecting rods in it and that's uh the cali's uh, rotting and uh crank is all we use in all of these race motors they're they're bulletproof yeah so, very good yeah and then and then you mentioned the cylinder heads how about some of the valve train components that you guys choose to go with so most of the valve train components are comp cams okay. right comp cams grinds are racing camshafts and most of their components are what we use in the valve trains as well right so it's it's a match set so when we yeah. work with comp on the cam profiles the valve springs and the rocker arms and that are all you know matched together if you will and we use johnson lifters these are a hydraulic camshaft motor and we run johnson uh racing lifters in them yeah very good uh, are you willing to share any cam specs that you guys will use? In, in so a interestingly enough, I'm not. <laughs> the camshafts that we use in these eliminator motors are, are unique, if you will, to sure. this application. We don't even sell this camshaft over the counter. Okay. We only apply this camshaft when it's in one of our uh, racing motors. Um, and that's just because we've developed it specific to this combination. People think that the camshaft is the, the, the golden sort of bullet, if you will, silver bullet. Um, and it's it's not, it is when it's combined with the other components properly, yeah. but we don't want to sell this camshaft and expect people are going to put it in their NA motor and make 800 to 820 horsepower. So right. this is specific to this motor and we've been very sort of um, uh, hush hush on the, the specifications to the cam yeah. itself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Well, I have to ask because you know people do want to know oh, yeah. if you're if you're willing to share, but we understand not wanting to. All right, so then Mark, how about uh, you, you mentioned the intake manifold up top? Is right. something special to this engine as well? So performance design are the manifolds that we use on most of these applications. Uh, we are a development partner for performance design, so as they go through their process of of uh, building new components for LS or LT motors, we do a lot of their testing for them. So we've done a lot of the early testing on both their LS and their LT manifolds. And uh, the interesting part about this is the runners inside, uh, you can vary the length of them. So depending on the application compression ratio, RPM, we're gonna run cubic inch. We vary the, the uh, length of the runners inside the manifold to basically tune the motor, right? And, it, and the other thing that's, that's unique about that is not all the runners are always the same length. So we'll vary runners on different cylinders to help uh, manage the, the pulse cycles yeah. in, in the chambers. And that doesn't necessarily give us more horsepower, but it balances out the torque and it makes the engine more drivable. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. All right, so you mentioned that this is for an endurance uh, application. Um, and this particular customer, you know, do you know the vehicle that he's putting it in? It's a C6 Corvette. Okay. Very good. And you said it makes somewhere between that 800 and 820 horsepower? Yeah, but I'll have to look at the graphs. But uh, normally when we run this particular motor, there's some place between 800 and 820, okay. depending on how hard we run it on the engine dyno. So. Yeah, and somewhere around 7,200 RPM? Yeah, normally yeah. they run on the engine dyno, we run them up to 7,200 RPM. Um, they're capable of running to 8,000 okay. without any problem. Wow. Wow. Yep. Pretty cool. Very good. Mark, anything else about this particular Eliminator you know, combination that we left out? Um, no, I, I mean, the, the Eliminator spec program is designed to build a spec motor to a specific application, right? So depending if this is a drift motor, like we do some spec drift motors, uh, I shouldn't say spec Eliminator, spec drift motors, then the combination will be different. It might still be 454 cubic inches, but we might use a different cam. We might use different, right. you know, other components, vary the compression ratio. So this motor was built specifically to the application that the customer is going to use the car, which is road racing, time attack, okay. you know, that type of thing. And, uh, and that's how the whole Eliminator spec program works. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, Mark, we appreciate you telling us a little Thank bit you. about it. Yeah. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Engine of the Week. Make sure you guys are checking out everything going on here at Lingenfelter Performance Engineering. And as always, check out enginebuildermag.com for more great engine content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. Hey, while I've got you guys here, I wanted to tell you about Find a Builder. It's a new microsite on enginebuildermag.com that's great for both engine shops and for potential customers looking to get engine work done. If you're an engine builder, this site is a place where you guys can list your shop and what you guys do to potential customers through enginebuildermag.com. It's an easy subscription-based microsite that'll let you guys connect to a new audience. And if you're a potential customer looking to get engine work done, this is a source to help you guys find a shop that's in your area or one that specializes in the type of engine work that you're trying to get done. Make sure you guys are checking out Find a Builder on EngineBuilderMag.com. Thanks.